I'm going to introduce Peter, and this is a, an abbreviated introduction. So Peter, feel free to share anything that I have left out. Um, Reverend Peter Fairbrother began his career in the UK Health and Social Services in Information and Research. His strong inclination towards spiritual exploration led him from Catholicism through Protestantism, earth-based traditions, new age philosophies, and spiritualism. He began leading services of meditation and healing there. Eventually, he landed at the One Spirit Interfaith Foundation and trained for interfaith ministry. He was ordained in 2016 and he most recently completed not a two year, but a three year stint serving in a UU congregation in Edinburgh, Scotland. He lives with his partner, Phil, in a small seaside town outside that city. Welcome, welcome. So pleased to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Today's service is dedicated to those who have at one time or another felt broken. Whether that's broken heartedness, broken spiritness, broken through experience or circumstance. Friends, I guess you could say that's all of us, at least some of the time. Today we'll explore beauty in brokenness, the beauty that lies within and often because of the cracks that occur in our lives. Friends, we're often told to cherish the cracks because that's where the light gets in. And whilst that may feel true for many of us, most of the time, the business of cracking is a traumatic one. Whether the cracks occur in our personal life, at work, or a fracture in our beliefs and values in our community, it often feels more like a violent cracking up than a gentle cracking open. Friends, life often tells us this, it is relentless. Growth and change unstoppable. Not even death stops change, quite the contrary in fact. In essence, as we journey through life, we learn that there is no way back, no way to unlive our experiences, no way to retract from having tasted life in all its hues. And once cracked, no way to repiece and climb back into whatever shell or structure that contained us. I love these words from Alice, from Alice in Wonderland. There's no use trying to go back to yesterday because I was a different person then. There's no use trying to go back to yesterday because I was a different person then. How many of us bear testimony to the difficulties of the past being instrumental in creating who we are today? Those moments forged in fire that burnt us to the ground, that obliterated who we think we are and created who we are now. Perhaps for many of us, this has been our path a thousand times over and perhaps it will always be so. Today, we'll honour the cracks. To quote the late, great Leonard Cohen, there is a crack, a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. Let me talk domestic. And let me bring us to that moment when we accidentally knock over a drop a beloved bowl, a teapot or a vase. And then the horror when it falls to the ground and shatters into a thousand pieces. I'm sure many of us have been there. Perhaps all of us have been there at some stage when we knock over something that's very precious to us and it breaks. Breath to me, we may quickly and regretfully dispose of the remains. 
a cherished item seemingly destroyed in form and in function, and perhaps in our mind also in beauty. Or is it? There's an alternative to throwing away the broken pieces, a Japanese practice that repieces the broken ceramic, and that's called kitsugi, which literally means golden repair. Kintsugi involves using a precious metal, usually a liquid gold or silver, or a lacquer dusted with powdered gold, to bring together the pieces of a broken ceramic item. Every repaired piece is unique because the randomness in which the ceramic breaks cannot be foretold and the uniqueness of the join also is precious to the moment in which it's been replaced. According to art historians, Kintsugi came about accidentally. The story goes that a 15th century shogun broke his favorite kibo and he sent to China for repairs. It came back crudely stapled together with unsightly metal pins, much to its owner's disappointment. However, all was not lost. Local craftsmen came up with an innovative solution. They filled the crack in the broken bowl with a golden lacquer, making the item beautifully unique. This repair elevated the fallen bowl back to its place as the Shogun's favourite tea bowl and a new art form and one you could say also a new spiritual practice was born. I'd like us to consider the art and craft of Kintsugi as a form of spiritual practice following the teachings of Dr. Alexei Altman, a clinical psychologist. When applied to ourselves, Dr. Alt Dr. Alexei considers that the practice of Kintsugi can help us bring the fragmented parts of ourself together. Let me explain. She describes five materials that are required to undertake the practice of Kintsugi both as a material artistic practice and as a spiritual practice. These may exist in physicality or in our mind's eye. And the first three materials that are required for this practice are thus. A ceramic bowl, which in its physicality may represent an aspect of ourself. A cloth which represent what holds us, such as the love of another, or our faith, or our community, or some element of self-belief. And a hammer, an implement which is used to both destroy and bring things together. We may want to identify the hammer and the hammer blows that have impacted upon us in our lives, in our personal lives. And so the practice is thus. The bowl is carefully wrapped in a cloth, either physically or in our mind. And it is forcibly cracked by a hammer. The bowl is utterly smashed. Utterly. At this point, we are faced with the challenge of staying with the broken pieces. And this really is the challenge. Dr. Alexei says that this part of the practice is the one we are most likely to want to skip over really quickly. We often don't want to see the mess we have created, and we certainly don't want others to see our mess. Instead, we rush to fix, to repair. But the discipline here is to pause and to take time to sit mindfully, mindfully with the pieces to be with the brokenness, to really be the brokenness. If you're undertaking this practice imaginatively, give thought to an episode of brokenness within your life for as much as you feel comfortable or able to be with that moment. It isn't easy.
Then the fourth element of this practice is brought in, either physically or metaphorically, the glue. And this represents the alchemy of connection, bringing together the broken pieces. The liquid gold or silver or the gold infused lacquer is used to used over the glued crack lines, not as a cover up, but to highlight, to map the brokenness, to map the brokenness. And this repiecing may take some time. And it's encouraged that we take our time, that we go at our own pace. We go gently in repiecing, just as we did in being with the broken item and truly appreciating its brokenness. Kintsugi offers us many insights to support our own healing journeys. Firstly, that we shouldn't discard the broken, either in ceramics or in people, and especially not in ourselves. When something or someone breaks, it doesn't mean that it or they are of no use or any less beautiful. In Kintsugi, the breakage uh, it's a breakage that enhances the beauty and the repair that adds the value. And I'm going to say that again. In Kintsugi, it is a breakage that enhances the beauty and the repair that adds the value. If you want to think of it in this way, Kintsugi is the essence of resilience. As I mentioned earlier, breakages are traumatic. But the practice of Kintsugi, if we apply it to ourselves, tools us to look for ways of coping, to honour our unique brokenness as precious and as sacred. How long we stay with the brokenness and with the pieces is our gift to ourselves. Kintsugi also reminds us to let go of our assumptions about perfection. For when we expect everything and everyone to be perfect, including ourselves, we not only discount much of what is beautiful, but we create a hard world where kindness is diminished, where people's positive qualities are overlooked in favour of their flaws, and where standards become impossibly limiting restrictive and unhealthy. Kasugi applied to ourselves helps, helps us acknowledge our cracks, to truly see our vulnerabilities, our wounds, and those things that we may consider to be our mistakes. Instead, the practice encourages us, us to proudly exhibit our scars. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. Indeed, it is a striving for perfection, for the unattainable, for the unreachable, that often leads us to cracking up. Perhaps it's the ultimate irony, in a way, that the hammer blows to our ego is that which leads us to our reformation. In developing our capacity to be with the cracks, we often deepen our capacity to show others our vulnerability. It's a process that helps us open up makes us more willing to reach out, to trust, to form greater bonds of intimacy with others, but I would counter also with ourself, also with ourself. Perhaps some of us deep down inside may consider that vulnerability is courage in you, but inadequacy in me. In Kintsugi, our vulnerabilities, our cracks and imperfections 
are gifts to be worked with, not shames to be hidden. Why? Because it's absurd to be embarrassed about that which we consider broken in our lives. It is absurd to be embarrassed about those things we consider to be broken in our lives. That feels so important, friends. Things get broken, things fall apart, and that's life. It happens to everyone, and no experience is ever, ever wasted. Everything we experience, in fact, whether we consider it good or bad or ugly or beautiful, can serve us as a life lesson, even if it's one we wouldn't want to repeat again. In fact, it is often these that become our most important teachers. And yes, sometimes they can be tough, tough, brutal teachers. But if we're wise, if we remain open, and curious. We can use every scrap, every broken piece, not, not to patch ourselves up and keep going, but to bring even greater beauty into the world, to transform the negative. And that's where the magic exists. It is in the brokenness that we uncover the imperfect perfect, and we find acceptance in that. I love this quote from uh, Pema Chojun. Only to the extent that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation can that which is indestructible be found in us. Things falling apart is a kind of testing and also a kind of healing. We think that the point is to pass the test or to overcome the problem. But the truth is that things really don't get solved. They come together and they fall apart. Then they come together again and they fall apart again. It's just like that. The healing comes from letting there to be room for all of this to happen. Room for grief, room for relief, for misery and for joy. It's perhaps in a broken nutshell that Kensugi reflects the cycle and, in essence, what it means to be human. We all get hammered. We all have to sit with the broken pieces. And we all have the opportunity, should we be able to choose to take it, to find ways to repeace, to redefine, what the whole looks like, and to make something beautiful of the lives that we have. If through this we come to the realization that healing is the journey, not the destination, the repeating is the process, not the finished product, we might be left asking ourselves, where are we going? Where does our spirituality take us? And perhaps the answer to that is a simple and complex one. It's home, but perhaps the long way around. I'd like to close my address to you with these words from the great Irish writer, John O'Donoghue. May all that is unforgiven in you be released. May all that is unforgiven in you be released. May your fears yield their deepest tranquillities. May your fears yield their deepest tranquillities. May all that is unlived in you blossom into a future graced with love. May all that is unlived in you blossom into future graced with love. And I'd like to add, may all that is broken be seen as beautiful. 
Thank you for listening. I've talked about Kintsugi and I've tried to figuratively and through words describe what this practice, this art practice looks like, as well as spiritual practice. We're now going to take a, a moment in silence to view some images that I've collected uh, of actual art pieces of Kintsugi, of ceramic work that has had the golden lacquer applied and, the, and been repieced. And these will be um, uh, projected uh, just now. So we'll take a moment in silence simply to um, observe the beauty of this art form and the spiritual practice. Thank you. Thank you. 